Car buyers face sticker shock as new vehicle prices skyrocket 30%. And I swear, some of these dealerships are just like a bunch of scam artists. And here's the thing. One, you really shouldn't be really be buying a brand new car unless you're making a decent amount of money, right? And like I think the average brand new car price is about 30 grand right now, like the average price. So really to buy that brand new, you have to be at minimum making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year to even remotely justify buying that car. Which that still doesn't really justify it. That's just like the bare minimum you basically need to where you're not car poor. So let's get right into it. The soaring cost of new cars is pricing out most buyers as car manufacturers scale back on inventory while rigging in record profits. Since 2019, the average price of a new car in the U.S. has risen 30% to $50,000. Okay, so I was completely wrong. I was thinking 30000 but 50 That's the average price of a new car? Like... Seriously, to justify buying a $50,000 brand new car, you have to be making about $100,000 a year to justify that remotely. And there's a lot of people that probably don't even make $50,000 a year before taxes that buy cars like that. So in order to lease a new car, it would cost $777 a month, almost double what it was in 2019, according to Kelly Blue Book's parent company, Cox Automotive. And for people who don't understand just how like horrendous this is, if you put the same amount of money into investments for pretty much about the same amount of time and then cut it off, you'd probably become... You probably actually have like multiple six figures in your retirement account, right? So like I think the typical like lease or car payment is roughly between three to five years. If you just put that same amount of money per month for those years into like the S and P five hundred and just lever like just basically never touch it again, you'd have multiple six figures into your retirement account or into your investment account by the time that you are retirement age, which is crazy because you're technically basically giving that to these car companies. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average monthly after taxes salary in the U.S. is 4318 Anyone wishing to buy a new car would have to devote around 18% of their monthly take-home pay. I don't think people really understand just how beyond financially stupid that actually is. Like, that scares me that there's so many people actually doing this. 18% of your monthly take-home pay to go to your car? (sighs) Man. Like, the biggest reasons why people are, like, pretty much financially poor is, one, their car payment, their student loan payment, if they have student loans, and their mortgage-slash-rent payment. Now, of course, other people have like consumer debt, more like credit cards and whatnot, but those are like the big three. Your housing cost, your transportation cost, and your education costs. For those looking to buy a used car, the options aren't that much better. The average price of a secondhand vehicle is around $27,000, according to data from Cox. Leasing a used model would set the average American back $544 a month. Like, here's the thing. Like, people need to be really careful with, like, here's the thing. I like cars, right? But you got to kind of choose the car that you are going to buy based off the reality of your financial situation. What's funny enough, right, you could technically buy a new Tesla, like a Tesla Model 3, for under fifty thousand dollars, probably about like thirty three plus the tax incentives, so probably about like maybe around like twenty six, twenty seven after everything's said and done, which is pretty much like half this, right? I think. Hold on, let me just check this out. So, just to put it as like an example, so Tesla, 
Tesla.com, Model 3, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Order now. And I'm using this as an example because I checked this out earlier. Okay, so let's do, hold on, Model 3, 42999. But this is, hmm, hold on. All prices are shown without potential incentives or gas savings. Blah, 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 blah. Feature details, verbal drive, potential savings. Okay. So 42.9990, right? But if you were to add on to the tax incentive for this, you're looking at basically mid 30s, low 30s, which is still way cheaper than the average car price, which is pretty crazy. Now also we could just check out uh Honda. Honda is typically a pretty cheap car company. So let's see, Honda Autos. Vehicles. Let's see. I believe I saw something. You get a Civic hatchback for 25850. You get a Civic Sedan, 25050. But I'm pretty certain, I, I know there is a car company, HRV for 238. I know there is a car from some sort of car company that's only like 16 grand or something. Let's see, Nissan. Hmm. No. Nissan Versa. So I think this is the one that I'm talking about. So Nissan Versa starting MSRP 15730 Right? 32 to 40 City Highway. Not bad. See, this is the thing. A lot of people go through this problem of like buying cars that they got to have to basically impress other people for whatever reason. Like, here's the thing. If people are impressed by your car and only your car and not you, that's a pretty big issue. Two, who cares what other people think? If you're able to go to wherever you need to go, get back to your house or apartment safely, can transport things and get groceries, can do whatever you want basically that a car is used for, and you have far more money left over compared to other people, why wouldn't you go for a car more like this than even like a Tesla. Because like the Tesla that I showed, you're basically walking out potentially after everything's said and done with the taxes, tax incentive, whatever, maybe about mid 30s, low 30s. This car, just the starting out price, right? 15, 730, maybe out the door, 169 maybe 17,000 that's so much cheaper like you could save so much money by simply the by choosing the right vehicle for your financial situation here's the thing if you're making like a hundred grand a year after tax because personally I like the idea of you paying after tax money not necessarily pre-tax money because it just cuts so much into your income like what you actually have, if you're making a hundred k per year after tax, and you want to buy like a brand new thirty thousand dollar car, that would literally not impact you financially really like at all. But if you're making like fifty thousand dollars a year pre tax, and you're trying to buy a brand new car at fifty thousand dollars or a brand new car at thirty thousand dollars, which by the way, you have to include insurance on top of that and the maintenance on top of that. That is too much car for your financial situation because you're not even including what you're having to deal with like your rent or mortgage or life insurance or health insurance or student loan bills or credit card bills or any sort of other bills or just going out. If you just want to go out, right? 
Like, this is such an expensive thing to do. It's a very costly mistake to buy the wrong car. And one of the worst things that you could ever do is say that you're down on your car loan. Like, so let's say that you bought like a car for like 20 grand and you took a loan on that car to buy it for 20 grand. You only paid off about 10,000, so you still are 10,000 in the hole. And the car value also dropped by that much too. So you, so basically you're negative ten thousand dollars, and you go and try to trade in your vehicle for a brand new vehicle, and they just add that ten thousand dollars into your trade in. It's just, it's horrendous, right? You're going to be so financially screwed in that situation. Oof, man. And here's the thing. I love cars. I really like cars. But you got to be very careful. So leasing a used model was at the average American back $544 a month. This is so much money that you pay per month. And for a car that you're not even going to own, because that's just leasing. See, the auto industry has yet to stock up on inventory and offer discounts as was common before the coronavirus pandemic when a global chip shortage adversely impacted manufacturing. Instead, car companies have kept supply low and sold their products at higher price points. Which, by the way, some of these higher price points, which I've seen, were like cars or like trucks or SUVs that were getting sold at a $100,000 markup, which is beyond insane. So the result has been a boon to U.S. automakers. General Motors recently reported an operating profit of $14.5 billion last year, a record high. And before 2019, car makers usually carried between 60 and 100 days of inventory. And now that time span has been slashed in half, according to data cited by Bloomberg News. And in 2022, Ford said it made an adjusted profit of $10.4 billion, which was short of its forecasted sum of $11.5 billion, and the company generated $44 billion in revenue, up from $37.7 billion in 2021. And while the semiconductor shortage has shown signs of easing in recent months, Detroit is focusing on keeping costs low. We'll never go back to the inventory levels that we were at in the past, GM CEO Mary Barra told investors last year. Jim's rival, Ford, is operating from the same playbook. Ford's chief executive, Jim Farley, said his firm will also issue the practice of building up large inventory and then offering customers discounts and incentives to clear it out. There's a glimmer of good news for consumers in the gloomy numbers. Vehicle suppliers on dealer lots are growing, albeit slowly, and automakers expect at least a small easing in prices this year as inventories grow. And automakers reported Wednesday that they sold 13.9 million cars, trucks, SUVs, and vans last year as the part shortage limited factory output amid high demand for new vehicles. It was the slowest, the lowest sales number since 2011 when the economy was recovering from the Great Recession. But sales were up slightly in the fourth quarter and inventories grew as part supplies improved enough to increase production. And analysts are now expecting sales to grow by roughly 1 million to around 14.8 million this year as demand remains strong, but they'll still be far short of the normal 17 million per year before the pandemic. Let's see some of these comments. Let's see. <laughs> I'm pro choice, I choose gas. I think the manufacturers are still testing the electric car market as they are compelled by the government to dish gas. I like gas. I am going to keep my fossil fueled wheels going as long as possible. That is bad news for new car assembly lines and sales. Let's see. Intentionally reducing the supply to increase prices and profitability, yet big auto isn't accused of manipulating the market like other industries supply and demand, baby. So the price of a new vehicle will eventually be about like a house. Government must be happy as eventually everyone will need to catch the bus or ride a bicycle. Pretty clever how the bureaucrats plan to work with the big corporate buddies to gradually roll out the big plan. Yeah, so this is going to be crazy. It's going to get to the point where people are going to be 
spending like an average car payment per month of like a thousand dollars, which is gonna be insane. Imagine spending twelve thousand dollars a year on your car payment, not including insurance, not including gas if you have a gas vehicle, not including oil changes, not including the typical maintenance of just driving a car. Like this is beyond insane. So here's the thing. One of the best ways that you could save money is simply choose a car that you can actually afford. Try to only buy a car that is at the most 50% of your take home, 50% of your what you make per year. It's better if it's less than that. Personally, I would prefer you to be more like 25% or 20% total, but you just got to be really careful. Don't get a car that you simply cannot afford. Because even though you might wake up and like looking at that car, deep down inside, you're going to hate yourself because you're going to be like, wow, I am poor because I decided to buy this car. Like, that is crazy. 